Welcome back to the YouTube channel, boys. Today, this is kind of a weird video. I mean, I'm going to keep it a buck. This is a very weird video if you expect to come here and... <laughs> it might happen a bit, but I think it's a very cool video. Basically, I had a talk with Dr. K, who, if you don't know, is a Harvard graduate psychiatrist... Psychologist? One of those nerdy professions. I don't really know. And uh, he developed, or not developed, but dedicated most of his life now to helping gamers who are addicted to video games. Uh, so he runs a, a Twitch channel called Healthy Gamer GG. He's talked to a bunch of streamers in the past on various problems they have, kind of broadened the scope of video games and almost used streamers that he talks to as a way to reach the people the streamers um, have under them. Does that make sense? It makes somewhat sense to me, so hopefully it makes some sense to you. Basically, I talked to a psychiatrist about what the hell is wrong with me. By the way, boys! Hey, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Look, I haven't shouted out in a while, and now 35% of the people watching my videos aren't subscribed, which is messed up. It is screwed up. It is weird. It's wacky. It's wild. Please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Turn it from red to gray. Imagine? One time for the one. I'm asking for my one time subscribe. Um, is there something in particular that you were hoping to talk about today or, or anything that, um, any questions or anything that I can potentially help you with? You know, I have a couple of topics that, uh, that came to mind. Um, I don't feel like I have like, you know, compared to most, maybe, uh, as deserving of a spot on the show. Um, like, like my girlfriend, actually, I think she came on cutie. I don't, I don't know if you remember. It was a, mm -hmm. it was a bit ago. Uh, you know, she, she got, she got the bag, she got anxiety, depression, the whole works. And, uh, and I feel pretty good, you know, like, um, or fortunate, I should say that, you know, I don't have personal problems that I think I mean, that I know of that I feel the need to talk to, but, uh, maybe broader subjects like, um, they talk about uh, parasocial relationships a lot on stream. Sure. And, uh, and I'm sure you have some, some sage dumb about it. And then, um. The only other thing is death. I figured you probably know what happens after we die, and I wanted to ask at some point. Sure. So I let's man, well said. So like <laughs> I, I I really first of all appreciate how you kind of laid out how you're thinking about coming on stream. And the first thing that I, I want to say is that I think you are just as deserving as anyone else. Hmm. And and I think that um part of the problem I think that we sometimes get into on stream is that we tend to overemphasize people's struggles and really we're not. And, and that gets a, like, I think a little bit too close to psychiatry. So like part of actually what I really like about, um, you know, understanding the mind and understanding like life and understanding yourself is that it's not necessarily pathology focused. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where we just, you know, a lot of people need help and we're here to help people. But I think like understanding, having conversations around death or having conversations, even about what you deserve and what you don't deserve and do people who struggle with anxiety, quote unquote, deserve more than you do? I think those are actually really important conversations too. So are we starting with parasocial relationships or death? I think you're supposed to end with death. So uh, parasocial it is. Okay. So tell me what is a, and I may not have sage advice because I think you guys probably know more about this than I do. So can you tell me what a parasocial relationship is? Okay. Yeah. So, well, yeah, basically it is, uh, you know, a one-way relationship um, with with someone, and uh, and I think that's the gist of it. But the way I understand it is basically people who form relationships with me, their streamer, um, even though I can't give anything back personally, uh, and then you know they might gain too much of an attachment. You know, a lot of people say things like "I love you" and and. Uh, and basically treat me as a friend and I can't reciprocate. Okay. And, and what do you think about that? You know, I've always been pretty chill with it. Cause I kind of grew up on YouTube and, uh, and I feel like I, I grew up pretty fine. Um, uh, but my, my roommate slime always seemed very concerned about it. And, uh, and then I think as I grew a bit, I was like, huh, you know, this can be a bit problematic because I think my viewership started getting a bit younger and, uh, and I guess more impressionable. Um, and I just think that, especially now that COVID people are on Twitch so much that, you know, they 
sometimes forego IRL relationships for online ones with people that can't reciprocate. What's wrong with that? I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with online relationships. I think that I see myself being like, I read my DMS and the DMS people send me it feels like it's, I, mean, I don't know if I want to say crossing a line, but I'm not the guy for the job a lot of the time. Um, and they're using me as the guy for the job and I can't fulfill the role. What What's the job? Help me understand. Like, Hey, this is going on. Do you have any advice? You know, um, I don't know what to do for my major, any basically piece of advice or just try to talk to someone who will listen even, um, like you would with a friend, they they might with me, uh, and I can't answer of them all because there's a lot. Sure, and, of uh, course. And I have in the past a bit, but you know, then it gets weird too because I don't, you know, I'm not particularly in like involved in the person's life, so I don't know the whole thing. So sure. So basically, that yeah, if that makes sense. How do you think that these relations, why do they DM you for advice about what they should major in? How do you understand that? I don't know. I don't particularly know why I'm the first. Maybe I've thought about this a bit because people do it for advice. They'll also do it for like, maybe just like money straight up or they do it just for like. Like they'll ask you for money? Yeah. Or just simple pleasantries or like terms of endearment. Um, and I I think it's maybe a mixture of a shot in the dark and maybe it's just easier to say it to me first, if that makes sense. Yeah, like help if, me understand that. Say it to you first. Like, if you were going to be like, you know, if I was broke, imagine I'm broke as hell and you're my good friend and I like I've come to you before and I don't want to be like, yo, Dr. K, can you just slap me a thousand? Like, it's easier to just ask a random man on the internet who probably will ignore it but there's a chance I'll answer and at least like practice how I'm going to say this before I go to you. Yeah, sure. So why do you think it's easier to approach the random man on the internet? Because you don't think they'll respond. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, but I also think devastating because what you're suggesting, and I think this is true, is that sometimes it's easiest to take the chances that we know have the highest likelihood of failure. Yeah. Yeah, I think people do that a lot. They do it's do the that same a lot. People who like send me emails with a resume being like, can I be an editor? And I feel like they it's the absolute minimum you could do, um, but still doing something. Yeah. And and you also mentioned at the early on something about I love you. Mm. You know, and what do you think what do you think people, what do you think your viewers, what do how do they view their relationship with you? Well, that's what I'm concerned about. You know, I would hope it is like, you know, um, like YouTube was for me as a kid or like any show is, I guess, like a little form of entertainment you can hop online to and maybe pull some character traits for me that you like and get some laughs. But that's kind of the, uh, the extent of it. Is that what YouTube was for you? Entertainment? It was entertainment and some like life lessons. Yeah, I would say. It was, sure. it was both of those things, but I wouldn't say it was like, you know, a source of friendship or uh, camaraderie or anything. So I'm hearing you kind of, if I were to infer, I'd say that you didn't really form parasocial relationships with the YouTubers that you watched. I like to think I didn't. I could be wrong, but I, I imagine I didn't. Did you ever tell a YouTuber that you love them? I don't think so. It's Jefferson. also just weirder in a YouTube comment. Sure. Um, did you ever tell a YouTuber, did you ask them to for a job? No, I did send a YouTuber my YouTube videos asking for advice. Oh, shit. And we they, just got a, oh, sorry. What, no, we, oh, my God. You got a $1,000 donation. Yeah. Um, by Anonymous. And $500 from Chewbacca. Sorry, we'll get, we'll get to donations in a second. I don't want to you disturb the You cut me off for no, a rack. Uh, That's yeah, fair. No, thank you guys very much for supporting Chalk.
Yes. Yeah. Good job. 11K, here we come. Um, anyway, you were saying that you, you never asked them for a job, but you maybe did ask for advice? I, I might have asked for a job, you know, when you're 16. I definitely have asked for jobs in a lazy fashion um, before, 100%. But I do vividly remember asking for advice on a YouTube video I made when I was 16 from, like, a larger YouTuber. And uh, he actually replied, um, which was hype. He said, kind of funny jokes, but shit quality setup. That's what he said? Yeah. In reply. What was, what was your question? I don't understand. That's no, it was like, like, do you have any advice on like my YouTube videos? Because I sent him a video I had made. Oh, like, I see. What are your I thoughts see. on this video? And, how and that's that what make, he said. How did that make you feel when he responded? It, I think, didn't matter because I had already quit at that point. But I thought it was cool that he replied for sure. What was cool about that? That he took the time for a young 16-year-old boy. Yeah, so we're going to point something out, Ludwig. Mm -hmm. What did mm -hmm. you just do? Uh, thanked the anonymous donator in conjunction with you and brought up a story about uh, eating no, my addiction. Yeah, so, so, so like you just changed your voice a little bit. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. And, and yeah. you kind of made a joke out of it. You're like, yeah, it was oh, like, a... like, was nice for a 16-year-old boy. Oh my you're God, can't you're roasting me live on Twitch.tv. You know, well, uh, I can stop if it, if it makes no, you No, you're so good. You're so good. No. I did do that, yeah. What, well, how do you understand why you did that? Uh, how I made the voice? You make, make it more spicy? No, no, no. I mean, but why did you make the voice in that moment? A little flair? Yeah, but why flair at that point? I completely agree it's flair. You're cracking a joke. You're making it a little bit funny. Well, because then, because I guess it was a bit, I was a bit goofy that yep. I, uh, <laughs> just perfectly laughing. You got me. It was a bit goofy that the whole entire situation, but it's something I look maybe fondly back on. Yep. Um, but you know, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so it's kind of interesting because I, I, I think actually like what you're doing is lightening. I think the significance of it. Okay. Yeah. Why did I do that? Uh, so, so I, I, I think it. We can get to that in a second. I just let's notice it first, right? Sure. So we start with notice observations, it. and Noted. then like we can develop hypotheses down the road. The more data mm -hmm. we collect, the more accurate, right? But like I think that sometimes people feel uncomfortable. If I had to venture, sometimes like people feel uncomfortable like talking about things that are impactful to them. Mm -hmm. And so what we do okay. is we like make light of it. Gosh. Okay. Right? Yeah. And, well, yeah, I just don't like bringing too much gravity to gravity to, to things that surround me. Usually I like to keep it light, fluffy. Yeah. Perhaps that's it. Yeah. So so then if we <laughs> if you really want to go off the rails, what what makes it hard for you to sit with gravity like, you know, important things? Well, you know, gravity comes with a bit of weight and I don't like throwing weight around. I like throwing light and fluffy. It's a little more fun, a little easier. Yep. Absolutely. You know? It's, it's fun. Light. It's it's you know, easier. Serious. I'm I'm with you. So now mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a choice, Ludwig. We can dig mm -hmm. into that. We can go off on that tangent, but that tangent is going to be a little bit more personal. Okay. But I also want to fully respect, you know, what you want to do and what you don't want to do. We're going to ignore Twitch chat. Don't care about what they think. It's not about we that. Got to go you. down the road, Doctor K. That's no, why don't. you. We have to. Nope. I want to. Do you feel beholden to? In, yeah, okay. What does that word mean? So, it, do you feel obligated to? Mm. Um, or do you really no, want I think to? It's, I think it's a more hype road to go down, and that's what I'd prefer. Okay. Yeah. Why do you choose the hype road? Well, because when it's hype, it's more fun. It would be <laughs> regrettable to not pick a hype decision. Yeah, so, so once again, you gravitate towards fun. Mm-hmm. And lightheartedness. See, it's happening mm -hmm. right now. You're doing it again. No, it's just like it's something that's hype. Like, like I could, I could go down the road that I had predetermined, and then I could think a week later, like, damn, maybe Doctor K had some shit to say. Like, he probably had some bars to drop, and I didn't like go for the bars. Is it okay to not go for the bars? Sometimes, yes, but 
if you can and it's not that problematic, why not? Okay, cool. So if you want to go down the road, enough of a ma- oh shit, lost my pen. Enough, <laughs> enough of- <laughs> yeah, you enough. do it too, Doctor K. Way to make a lighthearted joke in the moment. But so so tell me what I mean. Do do you you know were you always kind of the Joker? Yeah, for sure, class clown. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, yeah, you know I I remember started third grade. We had a, I think it was called Brambling. Where you write for like 15 minutes uninterrupted. You're not allowed to not write. You can write whatever. And then at the end of it, you could volunteer to share. And I shared my parody of the book, um, My Brother Sam is Dead. You remember that one? Mm -mm. It was uh, about uh, Civil War. And I called it My Brother Slam is Dead. And I had this hilarious joke where Slam's mother told him to take a shower and wash the dishes like a mother would. And he, and then he says, like, as a narrator, he's like, and then I washed the dishes and took a shower at the same time. And everybody thought it was the funniest thing ever. And ever since then, I've just been on a high road. I just riding that high. What is that high? They all laughed. They thought it was funny. It was a classic good one. And how did that make you feel? <laughs> 10 out of 10. It was a banger. A certified good one live in front of all the people in my class and my crush, and the cool teacher. Sounds amazing. Did I do the voice again? Yeah, it's, it was amazing. It was good. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like you've been chasing that high ever since. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is that why you, is that kind of how you, can you tell us how you got into streaming? Uh, yeah, I did comedy in college, and then I thought I should do something with this after graduating, and I did a podcast with a friend, and he streamed it on Twitch, and um, that was Slime as well, and I was like, oh, you know, I, I could just maybe stream while I try to find some comedy group in LA or whatever, and then I just did streaming, and then that worked out. Cool. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about um, what growing up was like? Uh, grew up in New Hampshire. It was chill. I had like a, like a nice house, indoor pool. That's cool. That's a, like a weird thing that people don't have a lot. Um, dad died. High school was great. 3.0, I would say. Yeah. Pretty good high school all in all. <laughs> Did you say your dad died? Yeah. My dad died. My dad died when I was 10. Yeah. But also 3.0, I was in choir, honors choir. Wow, that's yeah. impressive. Didn't Can I cool. just think for a second? Go for it, go for it. Varsity soccer. How old were you when you were into the 10th grade? Uh, no, he died when I was 10, not in the 10th grade. Unless you're just wondering 10th oh, so, grade. Sorry, how old were you when you, the, the, the joke story is from the third grade? It was... Uh, on hindsight, I misremembered. It's fifth grade, I believe, actually. How old Mrs. were you Amber. in the fifth grade? Eight? No, wait. Ten. Wait. <laughs> I was ten, Dr. K. <laughs> See, you did it again. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was ten like years a old. A detective voice. Do you remember? <laughs> so what time. else happened that year? Wait. My dad died that year. Wait, okay, I'm I'm using a voice, but I do think I haven't wrecked. Yeah, I guess that does add up. Sure. You're on to something here, I think. I mean, maybe. Mm-hmm. So it, it's okay. Let's just yeah. sit for a second. How are sure. you feeling right now, Ludwig? I feel good. I'm trying to remember dates. Uh, cause he died in March and I can't remember if it was before or after the story, but I don't, I don't remember. I can't remember. Can you tell me a little bit about what growing up was like before your dad passed away? Uh, chill. I don't remember a lot, which, uh, is regrettable, but you know, I was, I was like 10 and now I'm 25. Why do you regret it? Not well, you know, I'd, I'd like to remember my father, um, uh, but I can't remember that much from when I was 10 because I had smaller brain, mm -hmm. less formed. Uh, but it was good. I remember we went on a lot of vacations to uh, Europe where the family lives. So we'd see family a lot. 
Um, school was pretty bomb. Uh, played a bunch of video games. What'd you play? I was the renowned worst gamer in my friend group, but I played a lot of Smash and uh, Pokemon Snap and Kingdom Hearts. Wow, cool. Mm. Um, never really got into any of those. But I'm really? Thinking about, yeah. Well, I've seen your show, and no offense, Dr. K, you're a bit of a boomer. I mean, you're whipping out, like, I feel like the references you whip out in the games you're playing are... Dated. Even, yeah, they're a little bit yeah. older, even. Absolutely, man. You'll always be like, you guys ever play StarQuest 17? <sighs> and it'd be like, for like yeah. Windows 84. Yeah, so, so, you know, it's a strange thing, because I feel the boomer inside me. Yeah, I like, feel it coming, too. Like it's 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 interesting because like when I see games now nowadays, mm -hmm. I think to myself like this thought pops into my head. Man, games are so much better. Like everyone talks about FF10. Like you guys need to go back and play FF4 and FF6. Yeah, you know. Let me tell are... you, I was just watching right before this. Uh, one of the streamers I really like play FF10. I'm like, damn, this game's goaded. The kids won't know these days. They're all playing Persona now. Yeah, I need to give Persona a shot. I want to give Pokemon a shot too with my kids, but it seems like per Pokemon Sword and Shield suck. Yeah, I think Pokemon kind of fell off after the DS when they went 3DS. It's kind uh -huh. of, but the old ones hold up like black, black and white. Um, they're good. Cool. So what we just did there is something called coming up for air. Okay. Okay. So sometimes when we talk about things that are serious. We sometimes crack a joke mm -hmm. or we talk about games for a little bit and then we kind of come up for air and then now we're going to go back in again. Okay. Yeah. I go so up for air a lot. I don't have yep. a big lung. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. Sure. We'll see. But yeah, I, I think so. I think so. I, I think that's sort of, I think you have a bigger lung than you give yourself credit for. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but I would say you do come up for air a lot. So let's just try to notice things about what we do. Right. And maybe mm -hmm. we'll learn something. So mm -hmm. you say that you kind of wish you had more memories because can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. You know, you, like like dad dead. Boom. I'm 15. Remember a good amount. Only like a few years ago, five years later, 20 in college. Can't really remember like maybe like his face or something. You know, there's like, you know, you forget the voice, the face, and then you got to go to like pictures and stuff like just like conjure it up and uh, like the smell, just like things you'll forget over time because um, it happens over time. You forget. This sounds kind of weird, but it almost sounds to me like you're, you know, he didn't die at the age of 10. It sounds to me like you're actually like kind of losing him piece by piece. I think you do, right? I think that's kind of how it, I think it's a a constant war when someone dies to keep them as much as you can in their lives. And you can't because you will lose to time every time. Good job. Yeah. I'm, I'm very impressed by you not coming up for air because that's some heavy shit. That's a bar. I, I you're the one, you're the one dropping bars there, bro. Okay. That's Do you notice that? Like, I'll I look, I tried, I, I, shit, man. I think coming up for air is good for others as well. So if I'm live with, you know, 20 K mm -hmm. on the reg, you know how it is. Uh, just came up. For I air. don't actually, I just, those are the come up for air. Is it come up for air? Dr. K. Um, uh, you know, I think other people also might appreciate that if they're not trying to have, you know, cause I think the vibe of the stream is expected to be a certain way. So you come up a good amount, then everybody else gets to come up too. Yep. Yeah. I wonder if the parasocial relationships form when you don't come up for air. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like even coming on this show could promote social relationships if I'm being too real. Sure. And not as much of a character. Yeah. And then they're like, damn, Ludwig's so real. I actually like him now. And then they give me their money. So and they're like... I love you. And then they're my DMs, Dr. K. And and then how does that make you feel? A little bad. Can't respond to all you guys. Appreciate the money. Easy clap. Um, I'm going to toss out a word. Do you feel inadequate? I used to. I think a good amount. 
I remember I used to stream like a year ago and my viewership was like booming and I'd have like a really good stream, like a banger, like 10K people would be there. And then I wouldn't want to stream the next day because I'd be like, I'll never hit this again. Like this is, I've, I've peaked, this is, I've done more than I can handle. And I would just, I would, I would not be able to hit the go live button and I would just lie down on my floor for a while. But I kind of got over that. Um, I don't know why. I can't exactly pin it, but I think I got over that. Yeah, so I, I think there's a lot to cover. Do you want to, you know, stick with the dad or you want to talk about the parasocial? I am so open. I feel like you're my okay. Sherpa in a way, and I would hope you can guide me. I'd, I'd happy to, I'm happy to be your Sherpa on this well, journey on a shit-covered mountain. <laughs> my dream. Um, yeah, so tell me, what, what do you remember? I, I know that things fade over time. And and that's sad. Yeah. Um, but what do you remember about kind of growing up? Like, like, like more specific yeah. about, is this about Just anything? Tell me about, yeah, sure. Anything, any memories from when you sure. were. Sure. Uh, remember a few from, it's funny, the thing about memories in that if you look up pictures or videos, you will form like fake memories based yep. off your like, Mm -hmm. nostalgic re-looking at it but i would say the actual memories that stick out are uh i used to do a lot of shower races with my dad which was basically we would both start the shower at the same time who could finish first probably not the best way to <laughs> teach a kid how to shower on hindsight you know you should take your time behind the ears the whole works but uh but those were fun um i remember Sleeping over friends' houses, uh, a bunch playing video games, and uh, yeah, there's there's a quite there's a few memories. School. Can you tell me a little bit about your mom? Yeah, uh, my mom's dope. She was a software engineer, and she was let go because like the company was, um, it was it was Hewlett Packard, and they were just like downsizing. Um, and then instead of looking for another job in software engineering and making bank, she just like went to school, got a business major, then became a teacher in French and in, uh, Spanish. Uh, so she could, um, like hang out with us. Cause then I think my dad died and she was like, Oh, you know, I can't be at work until five. Cause my kids get out of school at three. Wow. Um, and then she was solo mom doing the shits. Killing it. And yeah. and do you have siblings? I have a sister, yeah. An older, older sister. And can you tell me a little bit about her? Sure, yeah. She was angsty teen, you know, on AIM. I take a peek. She gets mad. She got that journal that would be on, like, infomercials that would lock to voice activation. A uh, bit of a klepto. A uh, bit of a trouble child. Great heart. Got in a bunch of fights with my mom. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was my sister. Are you guys close now? We're pretty close. Yeah. We both live in LA. We see each other occasionally. We text a good amount, I think. Okay, cool. That's a big good relationship now. Tell me, you know, what can you tell me about your dad or is that hard? Yeah, no, I can tell you. Uh, he was, uh, he was a cool dad. Like, uh, you know, like not allowed to watch TV after school because my mom would get mad, but the dad would be like, because he worked from home, he was like, you know, run it. And then she comes home and we have to like, you know, go through the Tom and Jerry sequence to clean up the house and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, he would he, he would never narc. Um, so he's definitely cool dad. Wore Sperry's because he was a big sailor from Sweden. Uh, lived there most of his life. Well... Yeah, Did about you say half. W wore Sperry's? Yeah, the boating shoe. Oh, I, I don't know what that is. You might recognize them because, like, oh, well, I guess maybe not. It's a newer, but it's like a, now it's commonly worn by, like, frat boys and stuff. It's Sperry's okay. and that one brand with polos. Okay. Uh, but he was a sailor from Sweden, hmm. and so that's why he wore it. And, and I, I wore Sperry's for a while after. What kind of, after what? He died. And what does that mean? You wore Sperry's for a while after he died. 
like he died and I was like, hey, this is our thing. Like this is the this is the Augrin thing. We wear Sperry's in this house. I'm gonna be a Sperry guy. And I rocked the Sperry's. And the frat boys took it over and I backed out. Frat boys took that away from you? They took it away. Wow. They did. I'd never connect. They took it away from me. Yeah. You didn't want to be like them. No, God, no. Do you wear Sperry's now? No, no. I wear flip flops. Comfortable. I'm not. I'm not hearing any emotion around wearing Sperry's now. It's just sort of like a. Yeah, I think I have made very. Uh, deliberate decisions to move on from certain things um, that felt like I was attached to for no reason. Like, um, like I had like his whole wardrobe and I threw out a bunch of stuff and, uh, and moved on from the Sperry's and like I had a belt that was his that I wore a bunch and I've whittled it down to a, uh, to a, uh, I wear his ring and I have his watch, but I'm not wearing the watch right now. So it sounds like, you know, you're not only losing him in your mind, you're sort of like losing, you're like sort of letting go of the possessions one by one. Yes. Yeah. Because I, th I thought it was unhealthy. What did you think was unhealthy about it? Like putting so much of an importance on inanimate objects and feeling the need to like use them or wear them when like if I were to look at it objectively, like boating shoes are not that convenient for a man who's not on a boat. <laughs> and his shirts are not that stylish anymore so you know it, i can keep it in the closet and that's fine and that's great um but i don't think it like it's not like it helps me recall anything and i don't think it is functional in my day-to-day -day sure where i feel the need to keep it yeah i think sometimes um you know you can also kind of think of it as like growing out of it like i, I think there are times where you know, you may have needed those things for a particular reason, and, and maybe mm -hmm. you just don't anymore. Um, sounds like a natural part of the grief process to me. Yeah, I would, I would agree. And, and how did he pass away, if you don't mind me asking? Alcoholic. Uh, and I forget, my mom told me like a couple of years ago, but the nitty gritty is probably not that fun to talk about. Cause it's like something, but, but basically it, it comes down to, he was an alcoholic, fucked up his insides, was refusing to go to the hospital, coughed up blood for a bit and then, uh, and then just died. Internal bleeding, stuff like that. I think. Wow. That's kind of grim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want to, I can, we can come up for air. I'm okay. Are you okay? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I mean, did you understand what was happening? Yeah. Yeah. I was 10. I do remember this quite vividly. I was sleeping in my mom's room because he was like not having the best day. He was sleeping in the guest room. And uh, at some point during the evening, my sister went to the neighbors because she was just like a bit like stressed out, like she gets really stressed. And then he went into the bathroom and then my mom got up and I think he started throwing up blood. She called the cops. They came, I went to the neighbors and they came back the next day and it was, uh, it was bad news. Do you remember anything about what you thought was happening or how you felt at the time? Uh, I was pretty scared when I was in my mom's room. And then I went to the neighbors and I just kind of slept and chilled and just tried to like wait. And then, yeah. And then they came back and I, and I got, and I kind of got it. Frame one cried. I think things had died for me before. So I kind of knew what death was. I'm sorry. I always, what? Uh, like, I didn't, like, like, like animals have died. I think, okay. oh, is, is my, was my thing cut out? Are we good? No, 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 no. Okay. I, I just didn't understand. You, I thought you said things have died for you before. Yeah, like, I think I understood the concept of death. I think we had had a family cat die, and, and so I think I had understood. My mom had explained it to me, because one time I asked her, I said, how many lives do we get after playing, like, <laughs> Mario 64? And she's like, oh, like, one. And I was like, damn, that sucks. And she was like, yeah. So I kind of knew 
going in that you get the game over Bowser screen um, on your first go. So when she was like, he's dead, I was like, oh, that sucks. You know, should have got 100 coins. Kind of stupid of him, but. Hmm. Just a quick come up. Just a quick come yeah, up. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> it's okay. Um, if I don't come up with you, it's because I'm trying to stay down. And, and you'll, if I come up with sure. you, then we'll be up for a little while. I just can't farm too many Sages. I have a quota. I, yep. That's why we come up for air. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The ultimate way to come up for air is a dick joke. That's <laughs> Yeah. It, to tie a dick joke into my dad's death would be phenomenal. Yeah. I'll come up with one. Rigor mortis. Who knows? <laughs> there it is right there. <laughs> look at how look at how easy it is. <laughs> uh, look at how look at how buoyant your mind is. Classic good Ludwig. ones. Yeah, I, that's what you got to come up with. Um, it's important to you to be funny, isn't it? Yeah, it's my job now. Yeah, coming up is what you do for a living. Yeah, I would agree. Um, you're very good at it. You're very funny. I think uh, weaving serious topics, while I guess we'll phrase it coming up, is uh, I think good because it allows you to talk about more serious things with people who might not want to because it usually sucks. Yep. It's, it's very, very um, healthy, actually. So I, I think it's interesting because one of the things we've realized uh, in the healthy gamer community is we're like starting to actually like get into comedians. Or it seems like a lot of comedians seem to really need a lot of mental health support. I think they're another population that like gets very, very poorly served by the mental health system. So it's mm -hmm. a bizarre thing that we're sort of noticing. Um, and I think that there is a lot of like, there's a lot of truth in comedy, right? Comedy helps us sit with very, very scary things um, yeah. more easily. Uh, I, I know that, you know, sometimes some of the in a sense, most insensitive jokes, but also some of the most important jokes that we make are after codes in the hospital. A code is um, when, you know, like on these like medical shows when they're doing chest compressions and they say clear and paddles and stuff like that. I think you'll hear the most jokes like after that. Um, really? Yeah. Okay. It's just hard to sit with, like trying to keep someone alive for 40 minutes and then, you know. Yeah. So they, just they die. Yeah, so you got to break it. Yep. Um, but, you know, did you understand that your dad was an alcoholic when you were growing up? Yeah, for sure. I think, yeah. 100%. How did you know that? He got arrested for a DUI. We lived very close to the liquor store, uh, maybe a mile away. And I think he just, he went, he bought a six to 12 pack, whatever, cracked one, and then they pulled him over in our driveway, actually arrested him, took him to jail. I don't think he was even drunk. And then he got his license suspended. So it was obvious because he would walk to the liquor store every day. Uh, and like, you know, like I, I was like eight, nine, but I know where he's going, you know, because yeah. I also called it the candy store because they had candy there. But he was never going for candy, Dr. K. Yeah. It was always for the alcohol. Sure, uh, his... And kids had brought it up as well. And, oh, kids had brought it up. What What does that yeah. mean? This motherfucker, Zach, on the bus, one grade older, uh, would sit in the back because that's where the cool kids sit. And it, he was just like, I forget exactly how it started, but he was like, he was just roasting me because my dad didn't have a license and would go buy alcohol and walk there and shit like that. Yeah, that sounds, do you remember how you felt or how you responded? I think I got mad, called him a pimple butt. You should have seen him. He was torn up from that one. <laughs> nice yeah well well played mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and do you know if your mom had uh, did your mom and dad ever talk about their drink his drinking yeah i mean they definitely had some some fights about it she definitely wanted him to not drink because she was like you're gonna die if you keep drinking and he had periods where he would stop because of that um but then you know he's addicted so he would eventually relapse and he didn't really like professional help because I think he thought it was like maybe admitting a problem too much or whatever. So, and he just thought he had control over it. And uh, I don't think he really did. Now, Ludwig, I would, I would say that, you know, sometimes 
uh, kids in your situation end up being very, very, like, angry with their dad. Mm -hmm. But what I'm hearing from you is that it's super matter of fact. Yeah, I don't think addiction's his fault. I think that was, like, passed to him. Yeah. Do you blame him? No, not really. I think he could have gone to the hospital, and he would have probably had a few more years, but no, I think he, uh, he did good as a dad. I feel he did a good job for 10 years. Could have done it longer, admittedly. But the 10 were good, so, you know. Who are you to complain? I can't complain. I got a good 10 in. Mm-hmm. Kids who have a worse upbringing are more deserving than you, huh? To complain? <laughs> um. Yes, they are, in fact. Yeah. People who have a... Like, so... You know, other people with anxiety, they're they're deserve to come on. But, you know, a, a kid who loses his dad from alcohol and watches his dad vomit blood and um, then dies, you don't deserve to come on and get support. I would agree. Agree with what? That at the end of the day. If anything bad happens in life, someone else had it worse. And I think that you can uh, just look at the positives. I'm going to have to sit with that for a second. And also, I'm going to grab a tissue. Is that okay? Go for it. Just let me, let me think about my comeback. If he says pimple butt, we're over. Professionally and romantically. <laughs> hmm. Full disclosure, I came up for air when you were gone. Oh, you did? Yeah, just full disclosure. What did I miss? It was it's less funny if I tell you. If you go back and watch it, you might have a laugh. Okay. Do you remember thinking when you were young that there are people who are like, like, you're actually pretty lucky despite your dad passing away? That I was? Y yeah, I mean, that you were lucky to have him around as long as you did and, and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I, I, I'm all, yeah. I was just going to say, I think in general, I had a, a good upbringing. Yep. Like, you know, in middle class. class, dad died, but... He had life insurance, so college paid mostly outside of like a bit of student loan. But, sure. you know, I think that's that's pretty, pretty good. That's a good life. Mm -hmm. Mom bought me a car. That's nice. That's easy. Move to L.A. You have, a, you have a lot to be grateful for. Yes. Yes. Let me ask you something. If you have a lot to be grateful for, does it mean that you have a... Is it possible to be grateful for things and ungrateful for things at the same time, or is it either or? It is, but I think the energy spent reflecting on what you're grateful for is more valuable than what you aren't or upset about, because that you cannot change, and what you're grateful for is something that you can keep and continue to grow and, like, you know, I think it's more valuable. I can get behind that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I disagree. Look, you know, I can be 15 mall that, you know, my Jonah had a dad until he was 17 and then my dad died at 10. Or I can be like, damn, I got this sweet car because my mom is nice. That's Pog. And I think that it's a better headspace to be in the second world. I agree with that. So th there's 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 one thing there's one thing that I would switch in your words. Okay, sure. You Pog. can be mauled at whoever that is at 15 <laughs> okay. because they have a dad or you can be grateful for the 
the car. And this is where I would say replace the or with an and. But so, why be mauled? Because you're only mauled at life, which you have no control over. Getting mad at something I have no control over seems like a fruitless endeavor. Let me think about that for a second. Because I, I think you're right. What do you have control over? Current life, relationships, and... Um, How yeah, do you have control over your relationship? What do you have control over in your relationship? How I act in them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say that's the biggest one. Yeah, how I yep. act in relationships, how I show appreciation, oh, everything. Acting. Perfect, right? So what do you have control over in your stream? Uh, everything, really, if it even starts. You have control over your viewership? I, in a way, I would say, yeah. How so? I can choose what I do, uh, which will influence it. I think everything hold, I do hold, will impact that. Hold, okay, okay, hold on, though. So sure. what I'm hearing is that in your relationship, you have control over your actions in the relationship. Mm -hmm. You don't have control over Cutie's responses, right? That is true, yeah. In streaming, you don't really have control over your viewership, but you have control over what you do. I think the comparison of like, because I get it, like I don't have control over other people's responses. I would say two things. One, you can like kind of predict based off of like previous encounters what might be a positive response. And I think that is even more viable in streaming where data is everywhere. And I can very quickly understand, you know, hey, this will do great. So let's be a little bit precise. I have control over flushing the toilet, but I don't have control over whether the poop goes down. <laughs> yeah, but it's gone down like almost every time. Sure, but let's let's be precise. Okay, sure. Yes. What I have control over is whether the toilet gets flushed. <laughs> That is true. Right? I did, I've never, so, I always thought I made the poop go down, but you're right. I only just flicked the nozzle. Yep. Yep. And, and so I, I, I'd ask you to kind of revisit this idea of like, okay, so, you know, what do you have control over? Like, you can't change it. Like, you can't change anything anyway. I think if I thought that way, I would not be a big streamer, though. Because if I thought I had that little control, I would never have tried streaming because I would thought, oh, I can't get people to come on stream. Yeah, so this is this is the really challenging thing, Ludwig, is I think, you, I think you're doing great. I don't think you're someone who has all these problems or things like that. I, I don't mean to make a mountain out of a molehill. Um, at the same time, I think that there are still like areas that all human beings can grow. And mm -hmm. I think the real challenge here is that what we have to, what I think would help you move forward in life, which by the way, I think it's just, you know, I, I don't know if you, if I had asked you to start with death, do you think we, like, it's just weird. Like the themes are just like in your face from mm -hmm. today, right? So first of yeah. all, you toss out this comment about how you're not deserving to be here. It's also kind of like, I think you could ask a thousand people on the street, you know, you're you're grateful for everything that you had in life, which is awesome. But like, I think if you polled a thousand people and they're like, you know, this kid had his dad die from alcoholism at the age of 10 and he saw him vomiting up blood, like, and he's grateful. Like, is that, you know, feels a little bit weird to me. <laughs> and, yeah. And, I mean, if you boil it down, sure. Yeah. Right. So, so but you but, didn't even add in the pog car. It, uh, sure. And a, a, a car makes it okay. Wow. Yeah. Like <laughs> it was right? a pog so, car. <laughs> I mean, must have been yeah, right to yeah, outweigh yeah. losing your dad at the age of 10. <laughs> it was, I mean, Jetta, they do it right in Germany. I'll tell you. Yeah. So, so I, and, and, and like, I don't, and I think what you're doing is, is healthy, right? So I think you're mm -hmm. right that like most people learn that dwelling on the past and like getting hung up on things that I can't change is not like productive or healthy and doesn't make me happy. I'm with you. We've, we can talk to or have talked to on stream. I've certainly talked to with people, not even patients, just people who get caught up in the past and it's not healthy. So I'm with you there. But I think that like the challenge is that when we think about, you know, growth, there's the low hanging fruit and then there's the high hanging fruit. 
Okay. And I think where we are is all the low hanging fruit has been taken care of. Like you've survived, you've thrived, you've grown. It sounds like you're in a healthy relationship. Sounds like you appreciate your mom. Sounds like, you know, I haven't asked you if you drink and stuff, but you know, I don't think we need to, but you know, I'm guessing that you don't and that it isn't a problem for you, even though genetically you may be predisposed. Hmm. And I do so a I think you once a week, you do a what? A classy once a week. What's a classy? Like a classy once a week drink. What does that mean? Like, you know, just like a, like a classy one. Uh, it's not like early and often. I'll just do like once a week, just have my classy drinks and then move on with the rest of my week. Okay. Yeah. So like low hanging fruit and high hanging fruit, right? So mm -hmm. I, I think this is the challenge. So if you look at like the yogis would say that the first problems you solve in your mind are the easy ones. And the more, the higher up you go, the more you level up, like it's almost like an RPG where you need more XP to level up and the issues become more and more subtle. Mm -hmm. And I think you've adapted really well. You've bounced back really well. You have a lot of like really like you're an incredibly resilient person, right? You've learned how to look at the positive instead of the negative that's helped you like not wash away with like the negativity that you deal with. It probably has a lot to do with like how successful you are on Twitch because your mind is, it's really healthy. It's like your mind has learned how to shift away from the negative and look to the positive. Mm -hmm. The challenge is that looking at the positive instead of the negative doesn't actually make the negative go away. So questions, thoughts? Um, I think my current thoughts are uh, to sit with negative emotions and then the rest of it kind of sounds like the avatar state, which I don't think I can do at this point, but seems cool. So um, I can... Yeah. I'm going to teach you two practices. I'm down. First practice. I'm going to teach you step one and it's going to be sort of the same as step two. Okay. I want you to sit in the moment between inhalation and exhalation. But don't hold your breath. Okay. Okay. So I'm, man I'm manually breathing now, though. Yep. So notice the inhalation. Notice the exhalation. Don't pause in between. But there is a space where between inhalation and exhalation. It must exist. Mm -hmm. no it does pausing. exist. I can't tell if I've manually made it longer or slower. Or faster, you know? Yep. So just sit in that space. Helps with your eyes closed. We're going to do this for about 60 seconds. Okay, come back to us. What was that like for you? Breathing out is way easier. Okay. Were you able to even find any inkling of the space between the two? Yeah, I think in a way. I don't know. It felt like a, like a Mario Party minigame. Yep. And I was good. You know, I was I was thinking it's of the a great way to describe it. Yeah, that's how it felt. Okay. Wow, that's the best description of meditation I've ever heard. Now that I think oh. about it. So here's the next thing. Okay, so this is gonna be practice for the real technique. Okay. Catch the moment of sleep. So there is a moment where yeah. you were awake, and then there is a moment that you were asleep. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sit in the in-between space between wakefulness and sleeping okay and and come back out or just try to sit there sit there baby don't be asleep and don't be awake i catch the moment a lot actually because the way i sleep is with my head hanging off the bed and i have my phone and i usually have a stream open and the moment i'll fall to sleep i'll let go of the phone and so i'll, I'll catch myself in that moment a lot right before i fall asleep because the phone will fall out of my hands stay there yeah Stay there as long as you can. Okay. Okay. And and this is where it's interesting because there's another conversation for another day about your karma and how you were meant for this. Okay. That you are halfway on this road, baby. You're already halfway there. I'm just going to give you a couple of techniques to help you go the rest of the way. If the techniques don't work, you're going to get there the rest of the way on your own. Okay. Okay. And I'll then once, once you do those for a while, then we'll give you a technique specifically on death. But in okay. that transition period, when your mind, it's, anyway, I won't say anymore, but just do it for a while and then check back with me in a couple months. If we ever meet at TwitchCon or something, I'll teach you something in person. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds lovely. Thanks a lot for coming on, bro. Absolutely. Chat, by the way, hey, Charity for Children, we're at 3.4K. Oh, right. Look, 
Boys, it's very easy. If you got some liquid income, I know it'd be COVID, but I know you'd be rich if you on Twitch sometimes. <laughs> so take a just a quick peek <laughs> at the old bank account for the kids. Bring back the book policy. No child left behind today. Wow. Uh, by the way, you have some great energy about you, bro. Mm -hmm. I'll match all donations for the next hour. By the way, are you going for another hour? Mm -hmm. We're done. You're done? You're, yeah. you're done this week. You're yeah. going to end. Yep. Like, deal for 30. Okay, sure. And I'll match all donations for 30. Okay, cool. We'll do that. Okay. I don't know what all I'm going right. to have to figure out what, what I'm going to do for 30, but thanks a lot for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. You don't have to do 30 if you don't want, but um, no. uh, appreciate it. It was a good time. It was a good time. Sorry, I feel like I'm cutting it short, but it went. No, through. no, 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 no. Two hours is exactly what we normally do. So okay. it's perfect. Take care. Perfect. All right. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you.